The General Atomics MQ-1 Predator is an American remotely piloted aircraft built by General Atomics that was used primarily by the United States Air Force and Central Intelligence Agency. Conceived in the early 1990s for aerial reconnaissance and forward observation roles, the Predator carries cameras and other sensors. It was modified and upgraded to carry and fire two AGM-114 Hellfire missiles or other munitions. The aircraft entered service in 1995, and saw combat in the war in Afghanistan, Pakistan, the NATO intervention in Bosnia, 1999 NATO bombing of Yugoslavia, the Iraq War, Yemen, the 2011 Libyan Civil War, the 2014 intervention in Syria, and Somalia. The USAF describes the Predator as a Tier 2, male UAS, medium-altitude, long-endurance unmanned aircraft system. The UAS consists of four aircraft or air vehicles, with sensors, a ground control station, and a primary satellite link communication suite. Powered by a Rotax engine and driven by a propeller, the air vehicle can fly up to 400 nmi to a target, loiter overhead for 14 hours, then return to its base. The RQ-1 Predator was the primary remotely piloted aircraft used for offensive operations by the USAF and the CIA in Afghanistan and the Pakistani tribal areas from 2001 until the introduction of the MQ-9 Reaper. It has also been deployed elsewhere. Because offensive uses of the Predator are classified by the US, US military officials have reported an appreciation for the intelligence and reconnaissance gathering abilities of RPAs but declined to publicly discuss their offensive use. The United States Air Force retired the Predator in 2018, replacing it with the Reaper. Civilian applications for drones have included border enforcement and scientific studies, and to monitor wind direction and other characteristics of large forest fires, such as the drone that was used by the California Air National Guard in the August 2013 Rim Fire. The Central Intelligence Agency CIA, and the Pentagon began experimenting with unmanned reconnaissance aircraft drones, in the early 1980s. The CIA preferred small, lightweight, unobtrusive drones, in contrast to the United States Air Force. In the early 1990s, the CIA became interested in the Amber, a drone developed by Leading Systems, Inc. The company's owner, Abraham Karam, was the former chief designer for the Israeli Air Force, and had immigrated to the U.S. in the late 1970s. Karam's company went bankrupt and was bought by a U.S. defense contractor, from whom the CIA secretly bought five drones. Karam agreed to produce a quiet engine for the vehicle, which had until then sounded like a lawnmower in the sky. The new development became known as the Predator. During campaign in the former Yugoslavia, a Predator's pilot would sit with several payload specialists in a van near the runway of the drone's operating base. Direct radio signals controlled the drone's takeoff and initial ascent. Then communications shifted to military satellite networks linked to the pilot's van. Pilots experienced a delay of several seconds between moving their sticks and the drone's response. But by 2000, improvements in communication systems made it possible, at least in theory, to fly the drone remotely from great distances. It was no longer necessary to use close-up radio signals during the Predator's takeoff and ascent. The entire flight could be controlled by satellite from any command and control center with the right equipment. The CIA proposed to attempt over Afghanistan the first fully remote Predator flight operations, piloted from the agency's headquarters at Langley. The Predator air vehicle and sensors are controlled from the ground control station via a C-band line of sight data link or a KU-band satellite data link for beyond line of sight operations. During flight operations the crew in the GCS is a pilot and two sensor operators. The aircraft is equipped with the AAS-52 multi-spectral targeting system, a color nose camera, a variable aperture day TV camera, and a variable aperture thermographic camera, for low light, night. On the 18th of May 2006, the Federal Aviation Administration issued a Certificate of Authorization which will allow the MRQ-1 and MRQ-9 aircraft to be used within U.S. civilian airspace to search for survivors of disasters. 
Requests had been made in 2005 for the aircraft to be used in search and rescue operations following Hurricane Katrina, but because there was no FAA authorization in place at the time, the assets were not used. The Predator's infrared camera with digitally enhanced zoom has the capability of identifying the infrared signature of a human body from an altitude of 3 kilometers, making the aircraft an ideal search and rescue tool. The USAF Big Safari Program Office managed the Predator program and was directed on 21 June 2000 to explore armament options. This led to reinforced wings with munition storage pylons, as well as a laser designator. The RQ-1 conducted its first firing of a Hellfire anti-tank missile on 16 February 2001 over a bombing range near Indian Springs Air Force Station north of Las Vegas, Nevada, with an inert AGM-114C successfully striking a tank target. Then on 21 February 2001 the Predator fired three Hellfire missiles, scoring hits on a stationary tank with all three missiles. The Predator gives little warning of attack because it is relatively quiet and the Hellfire is supersonic, so it strikes before it is heard by the target. Further weapons tests occurred between the 22nd of May and the 7th of June 2001, with mixed results. While missile accuracy was excellent, there were some problems with missile fusing. In the first week of June, in the Nevada desert, a Hellfire missile was successfully launched on a replica of Bin Laden's Afghanistan Tarnak residence. A missile launched from a Predator exploded inside one of the replica's rooms, it was concluded that any people in the room would have been killed. However, the armed Predator was not deployed before the September 11 attacks. The USAF also investigated using the Predator to drop battlefield ground sensors and to carry and deploy the Finder Mini UAV. As of March 2009, the U.S. Air Force had 195 MQ-1 Predators and 28 MQ-9 Reapers in operation. Predators and Reapers fired missiles 244 times in Iraq and Afghanistan in 2007 and 2008. A report in March 2009 indicated that U.S. Air Force had lost 70 Predators in air crashes during its operational history. 55 were lost to equipment failure operator error, or weather. Five were shot down in Bosnia, Kosovo, Syria and Iraq. Eleven more were lost to operational accidents on combat missions. In 2012, the Predator, Reaper and Global Hawk were described as the most accident-prone aircraft in the Air Force fleet. In 2000, a joint CIA DOD effort was agreed to locate Osama bin Laden in Afghanistan. Dubbed, Afghan Eyes, it involved a projected 60-day trial run of predators over the country. The first experimental flight was held on 7 September 2000. White House Security Chief Richard A. Clark was impressed by the resulting video footage, he hoped that the drones might eventually be used to target bin Laden with cruise missiles or armed aircraft. Clark's enthusiasm was matched by that of Kofor Black, head of the CIA's counter-terrorist center, and Charles Allen, in charge of the CIA's intelligence collection operations. From at least 2003 until 2011, the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency has allegedly been operating the drones out of Shamsi Airfield in Pakistan to attack militants in Pakistan's federally administered tribal areas. During this period, the MQ-1 Predator fitted with Hellfire missiles was successfully used to kill a number of prominent Al-Qaeda operatives. On 13 January 2006, 18 civilians were unintentionally killed by the Predator. According to Pakistani authorities, the U.S. strike was based on faulty intelligence. An Iraqi MiG-25 shot down a Predator performing reconnaissance over the no-fly zone in Iraq on 23 December 2002. On 3 November 2002, a Hellfire missile was fired at a car in Yemen, killing Qaid Salim Sinan al-Harithi, an al-Qaeda leader thought to be responsible for the USS Cole bombing. It was the first direct U.S. strike in the war on terrorism outside Afghanistan. U.S. Air Force MQ-1B Predators have been involved in reconnaissance and strike sorties in Operation Unified Protector. An MQ-1B fired its first Hellfire missile in the conflict on 23 April 2011, 
striking a BM-21 Grad. There are also some suggestions that a Predator was involved in the final attack against Gaddafi. Predators returned to Libya in 2012, after the attack that killed the U.S. ambassador in Benghazi. MQ-9 Reapers were also deployed. On 25 June 2011, U.S. Predator drones attacked an Al-Shabaab training camp south of Kismayo. Ibrahim al-Afghani, a senior al-Shabaab leader was rumored to be killed in the strike. India has inducted two American Predator drones, Sea Guardian, an unarmed version of the deadly Predator series, into the Navy on lease under the emergency procurement in the backdrop of the tensions with China in Ladakh. The drones have has been leased by U.S. firm General Atomics, for a year for surveillance in the Indian Ocean region. The drones are under the full operational control of the Indian Navy and it will have exclusive access to all the information that the drone will capture. The only role of the American firm is to ensure the availability of the two drones based on the contract signed. Recently Indian Navy has shown its further interest to acquire additional Predator drones to the US. Armed MQ-1 air used in Operation Inherent Resolve against is over Syria and Iraq. On 17 March 2015, a US MQ-1 was shot down by a Syrian government S-125 SAM battery when it overflew the port of Latakia, a region not involved in the international military operation. The Predator has been licensed for sale to Egypt, Morocco, Saudi Arabia, and UAE. Hope you guys love the video. Don't forget to hit the like button and please do subscribe the channel and press the bell icon to all. So you can get the notification on each upload.